If you like what we do here at Full Fat Videos, and you'd like to ask us questions directly, suggest new video topics, or hear our thoughts on the latest pop culture info nuggets, you can follow us on Twitter at Full Fat Videos. In Casablanca, there's a scene where the band are asked to play as defiant act against the Nazi presence in the room. Unsure whether or not to do it, the band turn to Humphrey Bogart's Rick Blaine, who gives them the courage to pick up their instruments. When asked what Bogart brought to his performance to capture that moving moment, he said, The director said to stand on the balcony over there and... When I say action, take a beat and nod. Screenwriter and playwright David Mamet believes this is the epitome of good acting. He asks, what more could Bogart possibly have done? He was required to nod, and he nodded. Because that's what makes this scene so powerful. It's not Bogart thinking about his motivation, or twitching his left eye at a timed moment, or improvising something he believes the character would say, or anything like that. He displays a simple physical action that alone doesn't mean much, but when paired in the edit with the shot of the band looking to him for guidance of the Nazis in the room, the audience understands the story. You tell the story not in the shot, but in the cut. The relationship between two images provides the order that the viewer is looking for to comprehend and then feel for the narrative. Or as Mamet puts it, the performance will be created by the juxtaposition of simple, for the most part uninflected shots, and simple, uninflected physical actions. This idea that that is all you need, a process that is simplistic but not reductive, is exemplified all across Star Wars. Why? Well, a lot of their characters wear masks. Across pretty much every single piece of Star Wars media, viewers are invited inside the heads of characters that either cover up their face, or have no facial expressions to speak of whatsoever. Star Wars consistently relies on the cuts and simple actions to tell its story, because that's all some of these characters get. How do you show Kylo Ren is angry behind a mask? How do you show C-3PO is scared when he has no expressions to speak of? How do you show Vader is conflicted? How do you show the lead character of your new Star Wars show undergo key growth and change? What's the look? Is that gratitude? The Mandalorian's third episode, Chapter 3, The Sin, contains one of the most important turning points for protagonist Din Djarin in the first season. It's the moment where the story really finally kicks into gear, the moment that defines his relationship to the second biggest character in the show, the child. Of course, the scene in question takes place with Pedro Pascal's face entirely absent, but by telling the story in the cut, by creating the performance through juxtaposition of shots and simple physical actions, we can infer exactly how the bounty hunter is feeling in this pivotal moment. Nothing else is required. Episode 3 sees Mando go on an introspective journey that is told almost entirely with these principles. And it's an episode that features lots and lots of characters that we cannot read from facial expressions alone. The acting is simple, but not restricted. In the opening scene, the intrepid child removes the ball to one of Mando's ship levers. Mando takes it off of him and places him back into his crib. The mechanics of the exchange are simple. Child is fond of the ball. Mando no like child playing with ball. With that. You don't need the dialogue at all here, even though both characters are in masks. Here, watch it without them speaking. The cut between the stormtrooper gripping the crib and Mando looking at it gives us all we need to work it out. You know that he's uneasy with the child being mistreated, his affection for the creature makes him question his judgement. We are seeing a contrast to the scene from before, saying Easy with that. just punctuates what we can already infer. We can just play it in looks and just not a whole bunch of words. In fact, you could probably watch near enough the whole episode and pick up on all the key plot points without dialogue via the cuts alone. The Mandalorian is paid handsomely. The Mandalorians are impressed. We know he is the child in the flashback because of the cuts. A bounty has been placed on Mando and the child that every hunter is hot to claim. We see the Mandalorian viciously burn a stormtrooper to death. The cut reminds us what is at stake and why he must do such a thing to ensure this innocent child's survival. But before we get treated to all of that epic action in this episode, and there is a whole lot of epic action. The Mandalorian needs the impetus to turn back around and reclaim the child he has delivered to the shadow of the Empire. Mando starts up his engines and realises something is missing. The components here are incredibly simple. All Mando does is reach his hand out, looks for the ball, and places the ball back on the lever. That's it. But it's the cuts, as well as when we hold on the shot, that tell us everything. We're just connecting the dots to earlier shots. Bolstered by Ludwig Göransson's incredible Skorensen, this simple moment is a contender for the most affecting of the entire season. 
The performance is so stripped down and something anyone can do. This isn't an acting masterclass, but the economy of story is so tight, just using the cuts between these things to tell it. This is the same principle that led to Bogart creating that iconic nod. Star Wars is magnificent at this across the board. Through a mere tilt of Vader's head and the cutting between Luke and himself, we sense the conflict. We understand that it is splitting him in two. Adding in dialogue would be a superfluous exercise. No. As opposed to Rise of Skywalker, where the cuts don't tell us what Ben Solo is thinking. He's literally only there to deliver plot in all of his masked scenes. It was Palpatine who had your parents taken. It also proves that the hoo-ha over whether or not Pedro Pascal was in the suit for much of the filming is utterly pointless. You'd be hard pushed to find anyone who can pick out exactly when and where Pedro's in the suit and isn't in the suit. It doesn't really matter. The ball on the lever becomes a signifier of Din and the child's close relationship. It reinforces their burgeoning bond, a bond between a puppet and a character whom the audience almost never sees. This simple exchange also punctuates their last scene together in the first season. Mando reaches over and gives the child a Mandalorian pendant, a permanent gift and trinket, that signifies the care and affection the bounty hunter has for the child he has taken under his wing. None of the acting is overstated or, by the actual stunt work, something anyone couldn't achieve behind a mask. It proves this is all you need to tell a good story. Most of us connected with Star Wars as children, and I think there's something great in the fact that any young person who wants to act or pick up a camera could do all of this stuff. The principles of cutting here are transferable. Any group of kids that understand the principle from watching the show could make their own short film using a bunch of masks and a camera phone. They don't need to have gone to acting school or come up with some poncy motivation. They just need to rely on the cuts they make to drive the story and the performance. It's for this reason that what I think Favreau and Filoni have accomplished across the first season of The Mandalorian is something that strikes at the heart of what the very first outing in Star Wars was meant to be. I also think the way in which Deborah Chow expertly crafted this tale proves her chops when it comes to handling the Kenobi series. I'm hoping for something as powerful as this, and I think we're going to get it. Hi guys, Matt here. Thank you for watching another full fat video. Don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit the bell so you know when a new video drops. If you'd like to get in touch with me, why not follow me on Twitter at full fat videos or on Instagram at full underscore fat underscore videos. A big personal thank you to our full fat tier patrons, Dr. Chike, Jax Merrick and Cyrus Solker. Your ongoing support keeps the lights on. Until next time, keep it full fat.